When you're working with PowerPoint, usually your goal is to communicate something to an audience. That something can be communicated in a list or a smart art graphic. Another way to present it is in an organized table. I want to share our bookstore's sales figures over the last five years, from 2006 to 2010. I think a table would be the best way to present that. To insert a table, all you have to do is go to Insert, Table, then move your mouse over the squares for the number of columns and rows you want. The table I need is going to be pretty big, six columns by six rows. Now click and you can start entering your data. But first, why don't we reposition the table so it fits better on the slide. Just place your cursor on the edge. Click, hold, and drag it to the new location. Then let go. To adjust the size, use the sizing handles on the sides of the table or in the corners. Now we can enter some of our text. You can click any cell to select it, or use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate. Right now I'm using the down arrow to make my way down this column. Adding more columns or rows to a table is easy. I'd like to try inserting one below the row that starts with mystery. So I'm going to right click and go to insert. My options include inserting a column to the left or right of where my cursor is, or a row above or below. If I click below, a row appears under mystery where my cursor was just a minute ago. Alternatively, if you want to delete a row or column, all you have to do is select a cell, right click, and then delete it. Let's fast forward to the finish table with all of the sales figures in place. Now that the data is complete, I thought we'd take a look at the layout tab and the design tab that appear whenever you have your table selected. Notice how my table has a nice gray color that matches the slide? That's not an accident. It's already using a table style that looks good with our current theme. To check out the other styles, mouse over for a preview, or open the full menu. Once you've chosen a style, you can customize the way it's laid out using the table style options here. For example, you can decide whether or not to display special formatting for the header row, or the first column. These will all have a different effect depending on the table style you're using, so you might need to experiment to get the look you want. You may have noticed that this table has a border on the top and bottom, but not in between the cells. To add or change the border anywhere on your table, just select the cells, then go to Draw Borders. You can select a line style, line weight, and a color for your border. Now go to the Borders drop-down menu and choose where you want the border to go. I want mine on the inside or in between these cells. There we go. You can make further adjustments to things like the size and layout of your table by going to the Layout tab. The first thing I'd like to do is make the table a little bigger. Instead of using the sizing handles like before, I'm going to adjust the measurements here. Then click Distribute Rows to make the rows even again. Next, I'm going to combine these two cells into one cell by first selecting them, and then clicking the Merge Cells command. The last thing I'd like to do is select the entire table to change the text alignment using these icons in the Alignment group. I think Centered looks the best. As you can see, the Layout tab gives you lots of options for customizing your table so it works for you and the information you want to share with your audience.